So we're listening to, uh, I'm going to play a piece of something I was doing, a project, and I'll, I'll tell you when I put the, the full multi up. But we went through tape, actually. And I just want to see if you hear the difference or whatever. It was, uh, I, I was at Sound City, the famous Sound City. And they have, um, they had a 16 track tape machine with hat with the uh, two inch heads. So it was like the nice wide heads. And we were doing this old kind of funk, not funk, old R&B. And we wanted it to remain true to whatever it could. So we, so these are just the drums on tape. I couldn't do all the things on tape because the tape is sort of building up. It was fun on the drums, but the rest of it's sort of building up. Pretty simple drum sound. Not a lot going on. You saw the board, you saw... <laughs> it's just good mic placement, good sounding drum. Good, uh, good drummer, well, no, no. Good drummer, good mic placement, good talk, you know, just... Sounds right, sounds like a fucking drum, you know? Sounds like... <laughs> and, um, and then we had this little room mic, a mono room mic, 47. Nice old 47. I can press it a little bit. I can hear. I can hear it. But, but just the that smack on that drum is like what? Good sounding drum kit, I think. Sounds pretty decent for. It's also the drummer too. I mean, the guy's just—he's freaking. So another thing I think about those kind of drums that I, for me, always—if you notice the tom is ringing right along with that snare. And I've always noticed, and most people will just scoop that out right away. Get rid of that, get rid of that. But to me, part of the sound of that kit is that tom, every time you hit that snare, it's ringing with the snare. And that's why it has that sound. I mean, it's a, it's a basic overall sound. And I can dial it in and get things out and get it clean. But when you start doing that, you start losing the flavor of what it sounded like in the room. Because when you're in the room, the tom is ringing. Yeah. Just, rooms, just the rooms? Uh, well, you did, there was the mono overhead, and here's the other one. I didn't really. Here's the thing. When I started doing this and I made a nice big far room, she said, no, it doesn't sound like RB, and it doesn't, because RB, we never use room mics. We just used, uh, you know, and because, well, here's the. Those would be the two, two overheads. Ain't no real room. And one's loud and the other, there you go. So the snare is really coming from the overhead. The whole picture of the kit is just the overheads really. Except for, except for the kit. Uh, what mics did you use for the overheads, if you remember? For what? Uh, for, for the overheads. The mics? I had two 67s. What's that smoke? HB. They do have... Um, it's lovely. They do have a lot of really good old mics left in there, though. Like, that's what they do have. And the room sounds great. The room sounds, it's like, that's what stayed there. But that console, man, I'm telling you, it's a joke. It's a big joke. I'm gonna open the session now. So I'll leave, actually, I'll play from the two track first. That way I'll come up right. Sculpted feet 
Um, but so, there, so there's this artist, her name is uh, Judith Hill is her name, and she's really, she's young and she's an incredible singer. She doesn't even, she doesn't belong in this time. 
and uh, and 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 this kind of music sounded like the kind of music that I was that I learned how to mix on from Atlantic Records when I walked in the door. They were doing this kind of music. So the thing is, uh, she's also she was signed by Tony Maserati, actually, I think, as well. And and um, and so everybody has different visions, but for me, this vision was so easy. The whole record is like it sounds like an old record. Like it doesn't sound modern. It's just sounds, it's just sounds. There's nothing, there's nothing magic about it. Except it's a good fucking bass sound. What did you use for tracking bass? Uh, direct. Is it flat wound? Oh no, they, they, they were, no, they were round wounds. It sounds flat, right? Yes. Yeah, it sounds Yeah, no, but it was a round wound bass. We, we, we had a bunch of old fenders. Precision, definitely. It sounds like it's a flat wound with a pick. A yeah, no, no, no pick, never pick. So that would be the, that would be the round wound with the fingers of an old older guy. <laughs> now I'm, I'm saying because the old funk guys, like we never used picks back in the day. We would always use our fingers. The rock and roll guys would use the pick. So, but that would explain it because the the round wounds with the, the he's playing like this. And also, he's the bass player. Is from uh, he used to play with Billy Preston. Do you know who that is? Uh, he used to play. Well, he's an he's an older guy from back in the. He's been playing bass since the late '70s. So it's also his. It's also him. You know, and the drummer too. He's been like he. There, there. It was an older band. Uh, her band. Her, her dad plays bass in her band. And her mom, she's playing organ on this record. If you listen to this organ, the track, it's like, I dare anybody to play a B3 like that now. Because it's constantly moving. She's constantly playing the bars and she's, you know, it's like almost like you're in church. So she's that was one of the advantages, huh? She's super dynamic on that. Unbelievable, unbelievable. So that's half of what you got. It's not only just the sounds of the instruments, it's, it's the players too. She's working on Leslie Boy. Here it comes. Yeah, yeah, and then she's gonna flip back to to the other thing. And I asked her to punch in something like way back here. I asked her, I said, do you think you can go back and punch in? And she goes, I don't know where I was. Cause she's playing, she's literally playing the draw bars as she's just playing and I'm like, fuck. around the sides of the organ so you get the the Leslie and then the bottom I put like an RE15 T snare. So that, before I left, I put a little of that on there. Had to. Never heard anyone. Had to, huh? Never heard anyone. Some little extra. Little plate. no. When I was doing this, I, uh, where I was when we finished doing the vocals. It was at a studio, and they had some plates, like echo plate, real plates from all back in the day. They were Eddie Kramer's plates. So when I left there, I printed all the plates. I printed all my 
I printed the horns, I printed her vocal, I printed them all through plates. So when I was able to mix it, I had a plate. And this would be like her vocal. Nice plate, come on, you can't beat that. Those, those digital things don't sound like this. They don't, they just don't, you know? I hope you never, ever, ever change A true inspiration My brother, my love